good luck to you. You can like from the break. Welcome pool fans from all over the world. I mean, we have a cat streaker before our lag for this final of the Bucharest Predator Open 2022. My name is Rico Dix. I'll be narrating you throughout this final, which will undoubtedly bring a lot of quality from these two young, talented players. As you can see from our scoreboard, on the left side from Poland, Three times Euro Tour winner Viktor Zielinski, also a recent Las Vegas Open champion. So the cat may stay underneath the table. <laughs> Why not? It's his home, it's the club cat. And on the right side of our scoreboard, winning the lag and therefore breaking first, it's Viktor Zielinski. Oh, sorry, Viktor, it's Copigny. I'm, I'm confused by this cat situation here. So both players. Both players trying to get maybe the cat removed from the arena. I mean, it's the most peaceful streaker you will ever see it. But yeah, that's the club cat who I've got to meet as well because I fed her some fish uh, yesterday. But yes, here we are. The culmination of three days of international pool playing nine ball action in the IEM Pool Club in Bucharest, Romania. Our finalist, Viktor Zelinski, squaring off against Copigny. Race to 13 we have here. So we've been playing on with a full 256 player field, double elimination, races to nine, alternate break, nine on the spot, three point rule in effect, and from the last 32 players, so 16 from the winner's side, 16 from the one loss side, were drawn against each other, and that we all played today. And now we've come to the final two players standing. So Copigny breaking from his regular left side, and in his semi final, just finished against Francesco Sanchez Ruiz, was breaking very well, making the one ball on the side and the brown seven currently, the wing ball anyway, the one on the right side in the bottom right corner pocket. And he made neither of the corner ball, did make the one ball, had two balls break, passing the break string. The three point rule is in effect. I'll talk you through that should it need to be talked about. So no shot on the blue two. What to do, what to do. Hmm. Yeah, where would you put your cue ball? to make Viktor Selinski think about taking the shot, giving him a difficult option, but still executable option. So Copigny giving Viktor Selinski only the right side, so the bottom side of the blue two to look at, I believe. Or might be able to see the whole ball, not the potting angle, of course, he would never give him that. Yeah, Victor giving the shot back doesn't see any good future in the options he's been given. So Copigny has got a plan. Let's see what that plan is. Let's see what Ko has in mind. Yeah, 
That tough action. No wonder Victor gave it back. So Victor, with a lovely straight in shot on the blue too. Now the three and four, of course, on the opposite sides of the table. So, oh. Victor, just as Francisco Sanchez Ruiz did in the semi final, missed his first straight in shot on the blue two. Okay, so Copen Yi. Of course, kicking at this. Don't know which side he's attempting to hit. Well, he's executed this shot before, so he actually hit this kick shot with right spin, so that when he hits the blue two on the side he hit it at, the spin takes effect, and that's what took his cue ball back down to this bottom rail. So, pretty advanced kicking action there, I can tell you. Not necessarily the direction, but cue ball spin wise. So Victor, well, he's actually looking at the potting angle, so actually can get right through past the five to make this two. So I thought he was more successful than he actually is. Right, so second miss of the game by Viktor Zielinski, giving Ko an opportunity at a ball to pot. All right, couldn't avoid making contact with the three ball after hitting the two. Now has quite a thin cut, cue ball will naturally roll towards the brown seven. How are you going to avoid that? Can he? Give it enough backspin to take so that the cue ball can pass the left side of the brown. Okay, all right. Doesn't want his cue ball to drift down any further though. And that will do just fine. So Co in line to run out for a one game lead. So wants to have a straight in shot on the seven so he can screw his cue ball back past the right side pocket. Yeah, that's all pretty well. So an extended race to 13 in this final. Because we want to crown a champion who's truly the best player of this day's play. And a race to 13 should be able to uh, tell us that. Race to 9, you know, it's, it's sometimes a bit too short, I find. Race to 13... You know, you will have made either enough mistakes or your opponent will have made enough incredible shots to win it, or maybe both. Coping Yi with a straight in nine for a one game to zero lead over Viktor Zelinski. Looking to cement his position as one of Europe's best, possibly a Moscone team candidate. Breaking from the same side codes, breaking from 
Making the core ball, corner ball, making the two ball. One ball hit the bump of the side pocket and dressed up nicely. The five ball should be able to go in that side pocket since it's already half over the edge, it looks like. So position on this four, pivotal. Oh, the four has got all pockets available. Doesn't want to be bridging over the nine and won't be. Nice tempo control by Viktor Zelensky there. Yeah, I mean, what's there to say? Just look at the poetry in motion, really. Viktor Zelensky threading his cue ball nicely around the table to clear up this rack in a rotational fashion. He's a pretty fast player, but has learned to slow himself down somewhat and take his time and allow himself not to miss easy shots. Never mind. The first two balls of the first rack. All right, comes up a little bit short for perfect position on the nine, but with his talents, won't be exposed. And he will take us into a one rack each score. I'm glad he made that one. I mean, you wouldn't want to have the commentator's curse on that shot. So. But also puts the pressure on the players. Copigny breaking off in game number three. Now, as I've said before in previous matches, they're actually looking. The one ball often goes into the side, but then you're reliant on the two ball that's flying around wildly to get position on the lowest number ball. If you can keep the one ball from going in, and like that, going one, two, possibly three rails, and it often ends up there. And if you just make the corner ball, then you're able to kind of control your cue ball in one ball much better than a wild two ball flying around the table. So Copenhagen looking at trying to removing this template rack. I think he decided against it in the end. A bit more angle on this two ball than he would have loved, I think. So has to draw his cue ball with a lot of backspin. And that will then turn left into the left side rail and back out to the center of the table for a somewhat straight-in shot on the three. Nicely executed. Of course, both these players already having had four races to 11 under their belt just today. Started at 10 a.m. today this final if you're watching live currently the hour is 37 minutes past nine o'clock here in romania if you're watching this match not live and actually watching a few years down the line on the billiard network youtube channel then we welcome you still thanks for joining and watching this quality matchup um so a long day already for these players but that would also mean that they've made a lot of shots have broken off a lot of times and are 
quite an, a nice groove and I think that will show and it will increase the quality in this final so Ko working his way very nicely through this rack no problems whatsoever straight in nine for a 2-1 scoreline appreciative audience just do as coping you did and that's break and run out so it's got a shot on the one ball of course but it's not going to be an easy one even though it's pretty close distance So what will he decide? He could bank the one ball top left if he's able to stop his cue ball or stun it to the right for position on the two. Could potentially then leave him snookered. Could not even go for the two or one ball bank. And just snooker him behind the two nine, two nine five. Spin that cue ball. Ooh, careful now. He will have left Kopinji part of that one ball, although it may not be a favorable part. So I'm wondering what Kopinji is going to be coming up with here. think he has the potting angle even if he did then you know making this one ball and applying so much top spin to spin your cue ball forward and back down table I mean you know these players are incredible cueists but maybe not that good so I think looking to bank the one ball straight into the top rail and back down our side and the cue ball behind the 7-8 what do we think audience Ooh, did go for that shot that I thought was impossible I mean I would have loved to have seen that come off one ball is not gonna roll far enough to his liking so Victor Solinsky with a potting opportunity but with a tiny angle on the one ball if he hits it at speed his cue ball would be hard pressed to avoid hitting the black eight Hmm. Interesting situation here. You know, doesn't have too many spots on the table where he can make the two ball. So a lot of backspin coming up. Watch for this cue ball action. Wow, a lot of top right was able to avoid hitting the black. What a nice shot that was. Very good. Very good. Got a lot of action out of that cue ball because you had to hit the one ball so full to make it. So to be able to keep your cue ball having a lot of speed and energy spin is uh, pretty good going. So we're looking for a straight in position on the orange five. Careful now. Ooh, so I don't believe that seven eight was a cluster, but what it wasn't, it is now. So of course can still make this five ball, can leave himself a straight in shot on the six, but no angle I believe. Unless he has the tiniest of angle now, and that's a good result, because I do think he gained the angle that after he makes the six ball, let's have a look at the side view. See if it's visible from here. He needs the smallest of angle to thread his cue ball back past that side pocket and could potentially play position on the seven. We'll leave you here on this view for a second. Oh, 
Victor missing his third ball already. And we're only in the fourth game. Now, kind of got away with it. Well, got away with it so far. Did leave Copenhagen cut. I mean, Victor, I mean, Victor played an excellent second half match against Shane Van Boning, where he played basically faultless. So kind of wants to get back to those kind of ways. Will be disappointed with his showing so far, but has shown maturity in the last year or so to not lose his head and just treat every, every situation and every chance as brand new and just you know, trust that he's incredibly talented and can do good things. Bank by Ko. What an execution. Wow. Well, that kind of earns you a two-game lead by itself. Amazing. So Viktor Slinsky has to be careful that he doesn't let Ko break and run free. Ooh, well, Ko leave himself the most difficult of nines, like right in between positions to shoot at left or right bottom corner pocket. Going for the right bottom, you would expect him to get this. Careful now, cue ball. Okay, that just goes long. Ko Pinyi takes a 3-1 lead. <laughs> So Ko made a ball on the break, didn't make the one ball, which is quite good, but left himself a one ball in its regular kind of area, but with too thin of a cut. I mean, he may attempt this. Could also bank the one ball two rails down in between the brown and the red ball. Let's see what he does. Still thinking about it. Because let's say if he cuts this in, he would kind of be trying to play it with a lot of right spin, trying to kind of hit rail first and then clip the one ball. That's his biggest chance to make the one ball, but that would make his cue ball most likely run into the six. And so that doesn't afford position on the three. So, but banking the one ball back down towards us by hitting it full on the best he could do is try to hide his cue ball behind a pink four but that's a bit far away from that one ball so yeah that's where he wants to send his one ball towards where he just pointed his cue that's his main goal because if he does that then it doesn't really matter where the white ball goes Just hit it ever so slightly too thin, but still got a full ball snooker, I think. And did well to kind of have so much topspin on his cue that after it left the one, it kind of spun dead and remained in its current position. So Viktor Zlinski jumping to hit the right side. Ooh, ooh. Oh, the one ball is going to be left, I believe. Co kneeling to see what he's been left. And it looks like this, like he's got a shot. But well, let's have a look. What do we think from this angle, which is not total clear? Hmm. Of course, position on the three, not easy. Because, I mean, if he can make it. It'd be hard to make it and then follow his cue ball through to hit the low short rail first. 
Okay, we'll bring you back to the main view. Okay, screwing this cue ball back. Ooh! Well, we don't have a referee, but I can tell you that was a foul ball in hand for Viktor Zelensky. So, maybe he was theoretically able to make the one ball. He did make it, actually, but uh, after making a foul first. So... So Victor, a little bit lacking the touch because this cue ball should have rolled forward at least a ball's width or two. Shouldn't form too much of an obstacle. Wants to be fairly straight in on the green six so that he can maneuver his cue ball easily towards the brown seven. Is nicely in line really to take it back to only being one game behind. Don't leave too much angle. Okay, very doable. We'll have to shoot his cue ball now with right spin, which makes, you know, making the ball left, giving cue ball left and right spin, makes it harder to make an object ball. But for these players, that's what they do day in, day out, or sh every shot almost. So they're very used to that kind of deflection that occurs. Okay, so Viktor Zelensky looking to get back into run-out ways. These two balls, as he is a little bit disappointed because he wanted to be dead straight in a, on that eight ball. And now by making the eight, he's going to make his cue ball go to the left. Should he add some screw back, which he will, he can draw it into the nine. Yeah, anyway. This will not be a miss, but still lacking a little bit of focus, you would say. All right. <laughs> Managing to avoid making the yellow one, and with that being able to play position on the yellow one. Let's see if Victor can do the same. There goes the one ball, there goes the corner ball, so now looking for position on the three, which he duly got. So, with a chance to tie this ball game up after having already missed three balls, more than he would have liked, may not have cost him that much of a deficit. So, this run out in which he's currently nicely positioned, but that can all change. So, a pool player's objective is to Keep your cue ball in line if you are so. Should you get slightly out of line to correct yourself, hopefully within one shot. Alright, looking good. So after this pink and orange combo sequence of shots, the green six, brown seven, black eight and nine ball are all fairly neighboring one another in this south side of the table so all right nicely straight in on the five straight in position in this instance is what the doctor ordered once the screws cue ball back for a straight in shot on the green six so he can roll that in and have nice and easy position on the seven ball Well done there. Nice break and run out by Viktor Zelensky. 
if he downs this nine ball. Of course, three games each. Our score line is. Now I can tell you that both the American and Asian players don't really play the cut break, which is what is required if you rack the nine ball on the, the mid spot. So if you look at it from his perspective, he's trying to hit the one ball not dead full on, as you may expect, but a tiny bit on the left side. And he would like to draw his cue ball directly to the right right side rail after coming off the one. Therewith, trying to make the pink four bottom right corner pocket. Yellow one ball in the side. All right, made both. Told you. And it's got a shot on what is now the lowest number ball, the blue two. And just by making that ball, he will get position on the red three. And just by making that red three, he will have position on the orange five. Isn't that sweet? You know, sometimes you have to perform pool playing heroics to uh, get position from one shot to another or to even make a certain ball. And sometimes it's laid out a little bit easier. But then the art of playing pool is to keep it that simple. So, Pingiko adding the extension to his cue, so he doesn't have to take out the rest. So it's kind of looking like a, for a center table position for a shot on the six. And then again, a center table position for the brown seven. Well, for any of these remaining shots, to be honest. So it's warming up nicely this final. Victor getting back to run out ways after a few mistakes. But Copigny now taking the lead most likely again. All right, crowd show. Not break and run scenario that Pinico has just presented him with. All right. <gasps> Well, he made a ball somewhere along the line, made the blue two. Failed to make the corner ball, failed to make the one ball. And the two ball that is racked at the bottom of the rack somehow got kicked into the bottom corner pocket. So that's quite nice. Now, does this one four line up into a combination? Let's have a quick look. Well, theoretically, if you're shooting the one ball in a way that Victor was just showing you, but that's hard to do. It's hard to cut the one ball that thin from where his cue ball is placed and also bridging over the orange five. You know, I often think, I mean, it's theoretically possible and also practically possible therewith. But if you, if you cut the one ball thin, then its first millimeter or two of travel will kind of be forwards since you're you know, you're hitting it almost from behind. So unless he hits it as thin as possibly can, as he possibly can, I don't think he'll be making this combination. So let's get back to the main camera view. What else is there to do? I mean, does he want to push out? Of course, if he pushes out, he definitely wishes to make that combination impossible to play. So I think that's what he's doing. Okay, so they know better if we do, as we do, if the one ball 
goes into the bottom left corner pocket. Hmm. I mean, he could hit the one on our right and bring the cue ball back two rails down behind the 8-9. I think Victor's going for this one ball in the corner. I missed it, but kind of with a safety in mind. Was thinking that he potentially could find cover behind the eight and nine ball. Ko walking back to his chair to go get himself a bit of a different looking cue. He's gonna jump the white ball over the eight ball and try to bank the one in. He could cut the one in. it I believe okay he's currently distracted by a little bug in the sky oh careful now didn't do that much wrong to you all right that was a more cynical swing with his cue all right so back down to business I think he wants to bank this one ball and draw back for position on the three. Oh! Really the shot of the match so far. But did he get a shot on the three? Well, I guess he did because he's going back for his normal playing cue. That must mean he can thread his cue ball in between the eight and nine ball. Beautiful shot there. Nice. So that was the most difficult pot he hopes to be playing in the rest of this rack. So do remember that we started with a field of 256 players and these two players are the last ones standing. Even if you made your way without a loss because you were able to lose a match until we got to the best 32 player stage, these players have all have both won and let me just make sure I count right this is their fifth match today winning and you had to win four matches <laughs> to qualify through the winner's side if you came through the winner's side so both of these players have won at least eight matches to get to this stage if you went out if you lost excuse me lost early in the double elimination stage you may have had to win like 13 matches to get to this stage so incredible effort already to be the last two standing but of course we're looking for one winner so coping you with a beautiful jump bank shot shot of the match so far able to once again establish a one game lead well he had a two game lead remember but victor pegged him back nice 4-3, Copenhagen. Yi. So and he was able a few times already to not let the one ball disappear into the left side pocket and play position on that. Let's see what happens here. Pay attention to the blue too as well. That might disappear. Okay, not this time. Made the one and not the corner ball.
So, but a nice position. The thing is, though, if the three was able to pass the orange five, this would be a very nice and natural position from the blue two. But as you could see, Ko kind of wants to bring his cue ball to where he was pointing now to accept that 45 degree cut on the three ball. That's about as good as he can get. exactly where he pointed so five to the six requiring probably the most quality Nicely done. So yeah, like I said, quality required on this shot needs to give his cue ball a nice amount of backspin to draw it back at least past the left side pocket for a shot on the six ball here we go but just have a look how easily he generates the backspin has a nice loose wrist action not even a long follow through but just hits the cue ball nice and low and a nice accelerating stroke So we're looking at a future three game. Oh, I mean, never ever take anything for granted. No matter what the quality of pool player is you're watching. Wow, Copen Yi missing that seven ball for a three game, six to three lead. Instead, he's woken up Viktor Zelinski, who was quite slumped in his chair and actually watching another match going on another challenge match going on on one of the side arena tables so can you believe the seven ball coping you just missed games to three down and actually being able to might tie this match up at five games apiece if he's able to break and run out or at least win this round. So here we go. He's got a shot. Oh no, he hasn't got a shot. I thought he made the one ball. So what to do now? Tactics required on this one ball that he cannot see directly or can he? Can he actually thread his cue ball in between the seven and eight? Hmm. I have two already. Thank you. Okay, I'm just being offered some of the custom made nine ball racks. Outsville nine ball racks. Oh yeah, the AccuRack. One of the sponsors of this, of this event, nice custom Bucharest Open 2022, um, limited edition I would say, I don't think you'll be able to get this after this tournament. So beautiful kick shot by Viktor Selinski. All right, it's threatened and now Ko is coming out with the jump cue. If he hits the half left side of the one ball, might be able to cannon in the pink four 
Watch out for that. Did as I suggested, but now snookered again. And this object being a little bit further away from his cue ball, so his cue ball needs quite a bit of height, quite a bit of speed, and of course doesn't want to have his cue ball flying off the table. So he's had good success with the jump stick though. First jump where he's actually missed the pot but got away with one and we will see Viktor Zelensky coming out with the jump cue I mean we're hope we hope you're enjoying enjoying these short flights with us today um, we can pretty much ensure you a safe landing and uh, do fly with us again in the future we hope you enjoy this Bucharest Open final here we go, Viktor Solinsky showing us his jumping talents. Oh, hit that one too thin. Cue ball, watch out. One ball's tracking the cue ball. Oh, no. And that's going to leave a shot for Ko on the one ball in the right side. And a chance for another two rack lead at 6 4. I mean, he hit it well, just hit that one ball too thin. Yeah, so he's looking to maybe stop his cue ball from speeding away by hitting the nine ball. Or actually he's maybe applying more backspin. Hmm. Doesn't really be a, seem to be able to get the potting angle, view the potting angle correctly, which is difficult with this elevation. And might not be certain about the way he's going about playing this shot. So undecided still. I mean, he has to go for the attacking option. But what to do, how to get position on the blue two. Good shot. Wow, nice combination on the 2-8 there. I thought he may have the 2 directly into the side. Okay. So all in all, Ko the player, even though he missed that 7 ball in the last rack, remember. But Ko just that tad bit more consistent and coming up with some great jump bank shots as well to kind of force some issues. And getting to grips with this fairly unfamiliar cut break as well so that makes him all the more dangerous the more feel he gets for that all right would like a bit of an angle on this six does he have to now draw his cue ball back like 20 centimeters which is not easy to do just to clear and not be snookered on the nine behind the nine Okay, decided to follow it through and accept this angle shot on the seven. Nicely done. So, this break and run out could see him 
regain another three game lead halfway stage of the match okay cut that one a little bit less but made the corner ball easily made the one ball and the two ball came up nicely now I've seen him with quite a few times the way he breaks that the two ball somehow gets kicked to this bottom right side of the table remember the two ball racked the furthermost south side position of the rack all the way downstairs that does get kicked in a quite a random way but he seems to be able to keep that two ball on the bottom right side of the table which works pretty well so can he draw his cue ball back to the center of the table for position on the three that is the question i believe so but needs to hit this two ball i guess the thicker you hit this cue ball the more straight it comes back okay never went for the screw back well, I don't know if he necessarily wanted that position on the three, but he'll take it. Position on the four that's next door, not automatic. Kind of probably wants to stun his cue ball into the pink four, I think. Okay, so did stun it into the four. Don't think he envisioned leaving the four seven combo, but as things stand, I think that's what he'll, what he'll accept. So is now looking where the pink four will end up when he plays the four seven combination. And we'll probably have to accept a somewhat angled pot on the four ball in the top left corner, I believe. If he rolls it in, then he could shoot the four ball in the top right corner. A few options here. I mean, Ko is definitely one of the players that likes to kind of makes that, make that stroking movement with his hand before he takes on the shot. Opted for the more speedy shot Just thought he was hard pressed to keep position rolling it anywhere softer so knew that four ball would be stunned towards the top right corner pocket just had to make sure not to be snookered behind the green six well he did so so in very nice line here to take another three game lead oh what was i talking about I mean, some of these mistakes, they must also be created by tiredness. Simple tiredness this is the fifth long race these players are playing today only. From 10 a.m. in the morning, we've gone over the 12-hour session mark, and they've kind of been playing back-to-back. -back. Sometimes your round match might finish a tad bit earlier than other matches in that round, but uh, not much. You know, they've had a maximum of about a 10 minute break. I mean, one semifinal did start after the other. So one of the semifinalists did get a bit more of a break. But still, you know, you're in the pool hall. It's not like you can just go to the hotel and chill out. You're kind of constantly turned on. So can he bank this five ball? He sure wants to attack. and doesn't want to go back to playing safe. But did so. So showing some patience. And that cue ball is rolling too hard. Now, the cue ball is stuck to the rail, so I don't think the bank is on. You won't be able to bank it and get your cue ball out of the way when that five ball comes off the rail, I believe. A 
and uh, let's see exactly what he has or a bit clearer than the front camera view so it can hit both sides of the five I think could try to hit as much of the right side as he can and bank the five ball back down two rails behind the nine and the cue ball behind the six well Hmm, yeah, he's thinking about it. But what an important moment. Either it's 5-6 or 7-4. Yeah, that's how far he can hit the five ball on the right side. So I think he's able to bank it down two rails, cue ball behind the six, five ball behind the nine, potentially. Good tempo, good things can come here, and then again. It looked better after he just executed the shot. In the second half of those balls rolling, it never looked likely like he was going to get any kind of cover. But what does Ko do here? What would you do here? He's looking at the thin cut. Now, if he misses, he would like to overcut this ball so that the five ball drifts back down to this bottom rail. Cue ball will always travel back up to where he's standing, kind of. Yeah, just gearing himself up for what is a very important shot at this moment in this all-important final. Wow, shot it with... Right spin on the cue ball. Oh, that is not... That is a potting angle. Uh, let's quickly transition to the side view. Yeah, I think he can cut this. Has to hit the cue ball hard, though, even to make the six ball reach. I mean, that was a good pot on the five. But, yeah, you know, he made his cue ball run into the six. It could have also turned out great, and he could have been out by now. But as things stand... I'm of the belief and philosophy that you, you know, you send your cue ball there, so you take all the glory and you uh, also take any other repercussions. He's going to play safe, I think. Yeah, so no snooker. to do here I mean, you could try to hit the six ball half ball on the left hmm. you could hit the six ball half ball on the left sorry I was, was almost trying to follow what he was trying to do to try to split both balls to each of the side rails in a safe manner he might just hit this very hard and hit it four rails what is he trying to do here? Just pure cue ball movement. I <laughs> mean, that's a pretty... I think his cue ball went exactly the way he imagined. So, you know, would have to be happy. But it is, as you can see by that tap of the cue on the table, apologetic. So, not really how he expected things to go. But, of course, inside will be fairly chuffed. Could all still prove to be worth nothing if Copen Yi puts in another quality jump shift here. Wow. Cue ball. Ooh. What a great jump. Again, he's made, was it three out of four jumps or four out of five? Adding that jump bank shot. Wow. So not easy this nine ball for a seven to four lead for Copen Yi, or else we'll have Viktor Selinski back to five games to six. Although he could miss and not give anything away, of course. Yep, 
Yeah, beautifully sunk nine ball. Seven racks to four we are. So kind of a pattern remains. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and so will I. All right, we're back after this short break from Viktor Zelensky. Going to be breaking us off. Going to be breaking us off in game number twelve, trailing four racks to seven. Race to thirteen to decide the victor of the Bucharest Open Championships. Oh, that's the first scratch on the break I've seen, and a direct scratch as well. Ball in hand for Co to take a, a four rack lead. Now looking at the position of these balls, to be honest, that shouldn't be shouldn't prove to be too difficult. So Victor Zelinsky, as you could see in the chair, I mean just after that timeout he took would have probably you know come back a bit more positive um, definitely not more negative than when he left after he went down seven racks to four but then scratching directly on the break on the cut break I mean that's I haven't seen someone scratch on the break in a long time actually Yeah. Anyway, do remember, or I do remember, and I can tell you that Kopin, uh, Victor Zelinski was 4 8 down in the semi final against world nine ball champion Shane Van Boning and then proceeded to turn on the style to beat Shane Van Boning 11 10. So, you know, this kid has got spirit and he's got undeniable talent. Yeah, so a nice little angle on the eight ball to add a bit of top right spin to his cue ball to play the nine ball into the same pocket he's currently shooting the eight ball in. Eight games to <laughs> see what happens to the black eight. Will it go bottom right? I think the one ball will go in the left side pocket and sometimes either the two ball goes or like I said before he's been able to position that two ball somewhat somehow or other in the bottom right area of the table okay gets kicked into the corner okay so overcut that break and we'll have no shot whatsoever on the three ball which is now the lowest number ball on the table I mean he's not gonna be jumping this cue ball over the pink four three five do form a little bit of a combination let's have a little bit of a look from this angle so what do you do here push out of course Okay, he's looking to push out to a jump combination shot. Hmm. I mean, if he if he does, and you're Viktor Zelinsky, you almost think, well, I mean, I might not be able to shoot this shot, but he sure will and can. So. But no, I don't think so. I don't think that will be the thinking ways of Viktor Zelinsky. It looks like a very confident young man and trusts in his own talents. 
All right, so brings out the jump cue. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to take on this shot, but may also feel score-related, like he almost has to. You know, do you sometimes play the score or do you keep playing the percentage game and just think, no, this is not the best percentage for me. I have to give it back. Hmm, yeah, he's not sure about it. The body language doesn't rain down with positives. So, giving this shot back. And now Copenhagen Yi. Looking. To jump over these two balls, the four and the nine. And then hit the three ball in such a specific way that he can make the three five combination. Okay, here comes flight time. Oh, nice jump and a nice little yeah. show of appreciation from Victor Selinski. That is nice to see, you know, being 8-4 down and really wanting to win this final in such a top-class playing field. Seeing your opponent make a shot with which he could potentially go 9-4 up and then still being able to show your appreciation. I mean, that also shows, of course, sportsmanship, but also maturity and gentleman-like or nice human touch. Yeah, so here, left the angle that he wanted because he wants to indeed bring his cue ball to the left side to shoot the f six ball into the same pocket. And yeah, and could a five game lead potentially be too much for Victor to overcome, to claw back, and then to also get ahead of Copenhagen. Because remember, Copenhagen is starting to break better and better. Will not have been playing with this cut break, nine on the spot format that often, and is uh, surely doing well in mastering the art of the nine ball cut break. So these two balls. For a 9-4 lead. With Victor breaking, of course. There it goes. And these nine balls with the IDM club that we have the pleasure of being in and playing in with their beautiful tables. A nice atmosphere. Here we go. Go, Victor. Let's make this, okay, two balls stuck in the bottom right corner pocket, you may have not noticed. Okay, so two to the three, pivotal and maybe the most difficult shot he'll be faced with. Hmm, not easy to do, I mean, you're going to hit this cushion first, okay, he's going to draw it back straight out and in between the green and brown go cue ball gotta roll a little bit not far enough as you are able to see of course because who would be wanting to shoot three balls like that all day long but in having to make this three ball like that this cue ball needs a specific speed and it's going to be hard to spin his cue ball i mean the four ball goes into the bottom left corner pocket hmm let's see how he solves this conundrum four rail position one two three 
four and back out beauty okay leave minimal angle on the orange ball because position on the six is automatic and then as you can see it's kind of connect the dots meaning the object ball you're currently facing if you would replace the object ball with the cue ball you'd have position on your next shot so in these cases you'd most likely wish for less or no angle Victor getting back to run out ways. This nine ball to get his fifth game on the board. Well, he only needs this co break. Really focused and dialed in on hitting the one ball in a very specific way so not just a full-on hit but it wants to hit it slightly to his left and draw the cue ball back to the right side rail back out to the middle that's the way to make the green six make the yellow one into the side and this is an illegal break okay so the three-point rule is in effect. You may or may not know this. If you know it, then shut your ears. If you don't know it, listen up. The three-point rule is designed to avoid players breaking very soft and riskless and playing position on the one ball, because sometimes the corner ball goes in automatically. Three-point rule. Three points you can collect by either making three balls off the break. That gives you three points. But also, every ball passing the breaking line gives you a point. Now... Co made a ball on the break. As you can see, eight balls remain on the table, but only the eight ball passed the breaking line. So that gives him two balls in total. One short of the three-point rule compliance, and that means control turns to Viktor Selinski. And he could actually, if he wanted to, if he doesn't like the current position, could give that table control back once more. But he liked it this time, so a chance for Viktor for potential sixth game on the board and 9-6 looks a lot better as opposed to 10-5 down anyway Viktor Selinski in the first round today that is the last 32 single elimination stage beat Ronald Regley 11 racks to 7 Copigny in that round beat Emil André Ganflot a young Norwegian talent 11 racks to 8 in the last 16 Viktor Selinski beat Michael Schneider 11 racks to 6 while Kopin Yi defeated Imran Majid 11-3. In the quarterfinals, Viktor Selinski beat Petri Makonen 11 racks to 8 and Kopin Yi defeated Ralph Suke 11-7. And in the semifinals, Viktor Selinski beat World Nine Ball champion Shane Van Boning and Kopin Yi beat Frances uh, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz 11 racks to 7 and here we are the last two standing we can have only one winner please so he's going to play position for the 5 in the top left I would imagine once his cue ball off the rail a little bit because now it's going to be harder pressed to add backspin to his cue ball should he need that and you want to remain flexible in this game I think you can roll this in softly and still have a shot on the 7 in the side no see a little bit of cue elevation oh Victor yeah I think all in all I don't think it's nerves to be honest I think it's just the energy is leaving his body a little bit and has been doing so throughout this final And 
why that is or what caused it I mean it could be player fitness of course physical fitness could also be that he hasn't fed himself and watered himself throughout the day properly I mean it could be that he's both fit both well fed and watered and still doesn't have the energy or you know the energy he needs to keep control and true focus anyway Copenhagen Yi leads his final 10 racks to 5 Ooh, a pivotal moment that could prove to okay Victor Selinski to break looking for an opportunity made the one ball made two more balls past the breaking line well, the two ball came closest to him, but doesn't have a direct pocket. So what to do now? Hasn't come easy, these break and run outs for either player. But even more so for Victor, I think. Copigny showing a little bit more in control of his cut break capabilities in this final. But hey, you know. And yeah, could hit the two ball kind of full in the face tad bit to the left and hide this cue ball behind the red three oh. he actually miscued count the mistakes Viktor Zelensky has made on two hands by now and that is just a little bit too much against the force that is Ko Penyi and Ko Penyi has made a few mistakes of course everybody will make mistakes in the race to 13 but Viktor Zelensky has just missed a, a few too many very doable pots say ooh careful now as that as that advertisement board falls down I'm glad that wasn't a pivotal moment in the in the rack all right we currently have our highest live viewership at 2.3 thousand people joining us currently of course if you are watching this match at a later date on the billiard network youtube channel then that doesn't really concern you well nor does it now but isn't it great that we have two uh, two thousand three hundred people watching from all over the world tuning in to join us here for this incredible pool final and festival pool we've been enjoying for the last three days at the predator bucharest open you know you're just able to switch on your phone go to a certain web address and there you are live feed of world-class nine ball how good is that yeah co really kind of taking over in this final a little bit with the help of Victor Selinski and just you know not making any or many clear mistakes you know so few unforced errors of course everybody makes them but well and actually throughout this tournament Victor Selinski has definitely performed at a higher level than he has been doing in this final you know it's just ran out a little bit of energy because it's not nerves okay so that misplaced safety or miscue while trying to play safe by Victor Selinski allows Kopenyi to take his 11th game of this match 11-5 okay 
Here we go. Rack number 17. You can see still that intense focus. Absolute focus and concentration from Kopi, whether it's the first rack of the first match of the tournament or you know midway through the final. Consistency is key whether you're winning or losing, just keep the same form, keep trying your best, keep playing the game, and you'll see yourself playing as best as you can and creating opportunities. So go with an opportunity and I think he will not say no to the opportunity of making the blue ball in the bottom left corner pocket and then he was pointing at his cue or pointing his cue where he'd like the cue the two ball sorry the cue ball to thread through avoiding hitting the green six and then also going in between the pink and the black and coming back out so a one two three four rail position by Ko but first things first Two ball needs to be hit pretty sweetly. I mean, you could also decide to spin it in and bring his cue ball two rails center table. Yeah, that's what he decided. Yeah, you know, just more spin, of course, makes it the cue ball deflect a little bit more, makes it harder to make a ball than with center ball. With the first route he was sketching required a lot more aggression on or a lot more speed on the cue ball and I think this was a bit more trustworthy so again cue ball out to the center of the table for position on the pink four Yeah, what's there to say? Ko is proving that he can play a high level quality game at any time of the day, even if he's already won four races to 11 just today. to leave a little bit of an angle on the eight ball so we can follow that cue ball through after making the eight sailing from Copigny after you know, a good fight in the beginning of the match okay corner ball down Safety should be very doable if he hits the one ball on the right side, sending the white ball behind the nine ball, behind the green six, behind the blue two. Either or all of those will do the trick. Should be wary of uh, Ko's jumping skills because, uh, I mean, that's been proven to be a, a considerable asset in this final has to be said and it's something you can practice of course okay he's looking to leave the one ball where it is now roundabout ooh, ooh. yeah that will work now this will be a definite hit by Ko kicking off of the right side rail and, and there's a lot of good stuff that can happen no matter which side which side of the one ball he hits or if he hits it full ball quite a few balls you can get a, a snooker behind so 
it's more about speed, being able to find those walls of balls, either with your cue ball, in this instance with the one ball. If he hits the one ball exactly on the right side, and he could exactly could snooker could bring his cue ball down the right side. Yeah, that works. So Victor out with the jump cue has to clear a nine ball, which is not that close to his cue ball, which means the cue ball needs a certain speed to clear the nine ball. And will his cue ball then not have too much speed? Will it not jump off the table? I should be able to. Here we go. We'll hit it pretty well. Just couldn't make it. Disappointing walk back to his chair by, for Viktor Zelensky. And this could be all she wrote. Now is bridging over the, the eight ball, not easy. Kind of gonna run into the seven ball. I mean, if he leaves his cue ball where the seven is now, he could shoot the two in the right side pocket and so forth. do remember we have so many viewers currently live watching with us supporting Copen Yi but it's actually like five to seven hours later in Taiwan so it's in the middle of the night so thank you everybody for watching live with us We're really enjoying bringing this high quality nine ball action final to you and from wherever you're watching in the world currently or if you're watching at a later date welcome to this it was a competitive final and then Victor just let it go a little bit just loss of focus not the nerves getting the better of him definitely not and Copenhagen Yi displaying a very high average level and particularly good jump shot skills as well So Ko six balls away from tournament victory and with the cue ball in nicely in line like that, that is a nice feeling. Also with the, the opponent not really pressuring. So Ko Ping Yi in line for his first individual victory on European soil in the biggest open European tournament we have to offer here on this continent. would prove to be a worthy winner. Anybody that wins this tournament is a worthy winner and would have to fight himself or herself through a field of world-class pool players. Ooh, short on the seven ball. And for a right-handed player, this would need a little bit of a lean on the table. Oh, and therefore, first left-handed shot that I've seen throughout these three days. Hmm. Okay, so Ko is wearing a heart rate meter that we've turned off because it had a few bugs. He's so kind. He's asking if he can take off the heart rate meter bracelet. Wow. So, good switching of hands, playing that seven ball left-handed. Now needs one more positional shot on the nine ball. And then that final nine ball to be crowned 2022 Bucharest Open champion. And we will have Kopinyi victorious against Viktor Zelensky. Applauded by Viktor Zelensky. Truly a sportsman-like gesture there from Viktor Zelensky. Also gracious in defeat. Copen Yi, our champion 2022. Thanks for coming here, Copen Yi, and gracing us with your talents. He is the winner.